Alrighty, so I'm now making my usual drive up the 101 back home after I went to watch the Quakes take on FC Dallas at PayPal Park. And before I actually talk about the game, I just want to mention that, you know, I was sitting at my usual seat high up the stadium there at the corner. And this time they actually have some seats that I was able to sit down. I mean, usually that area, it's just kind of drinking rare if you're sitting near the top right of the corner. And this is uh, the top right of the corner, not the, the top left of the corner, because I think the top left of the corner is the, the Sky Terrace Bar at PayPal Park. And, you know, I, I was happy the fact that they actually provided seats because it's not every day you usually see that happen. But what kind of annoys me about uh, sitting up there was apparently right in front of me, I think there was like a big group of kids and probably youth soccer. And yeah, they were making a lot of noises. Now, I don't mind, of cor course, uh, some of these kids making some noises and stuff like that. And it, sometimes it can provide the, the atmosphere to the game. But <sighs> There's times where it started to get too much. I mean, they were just saying, let's go earthquakes, like, so many times to a point where I, I mean, I was thinking about maybe moving somewhere else. Obviously, you know, whenever I go to Quakes game nowadays, I like to sit at the top right of the, the stands there, the drinking rail, to kind of uh, see the whole, whole game itself. But I, I decided to stay because there was, like, a seat there. But it was kind of getting a little bit infuriating being to hear those kids saying, saying uh, those chant and basically being loud uh, throughout the the for first half and you know what I'm talking about if you ever uh, been through a situation where you're either with your kids or maybe on the plane uh, with the babies uh, crying all, all, all playing long that kind of what it feels like now fortunately it did stop in the second half and that you know and actually most of them was sitting there near uh, or standing there where I was so it was I know weird the fact that they were standing right there or there were even some that was kind of like uh, crawling down to kind of see the the game below the the drinking rail so that was kind of weird to to see it happen, but I really didn't, didn't mind. They didn't really kind of create too much of an issue for me. But uh, anyway, uh, let's actually talk about the game after I spend just two minutes talking about my experience and also just have to deal with, with kids uh, that is sitting there where I'm sitting. Uh, in terms of the game itself, well, it was a 1-1 draw between the Quakes and Dallas, but this is just one of those 1-1 draws. It feels like it's a loss for the Quakes. And honestly, I saw it coming. I absolutely saw this coming uh, around the 80th all the way up to the 90th minute mark where I just had a feeling the Quakes were going to blow it. This has been a problem for this team throughout the season, uh, mostly on, on the road, I would say, where for whatever reason, Luchi Gonzalez's team, they just cannot able to hold on to leads. I mean, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they just go ultra defensive in the last 10 minutes. Almost like they, they just kind of pack it up and just shut down, down up shops. Now, I have seen other MLS team does it. And there's some MLS team that has done it relatively well. And I will at least say that, you know, looking at how the Quakes kind of shut up shop in this one, it wasn't actually too too bad. I mean, they weren't really like conceding uh, chances uh, to Dallas uh, late in the game and really kind of um, just just almost hanging on for dear life. But what I did mind in this one and what I've, I've seen the Quakes have done so many times late in the game this season is the fact that they, they just simply sit back and just kind of bunker and basically just, just decided that that's just going to be the way to do it. Now, I have a phrase to, to say that uh, if I was watching a Minnesota United game, I say that's a row heat mode. So row heat mode is basically when a team just clearly sitting back uh, uh, just kind of de defending uh, 11 man in the box and just hold on to a, a resort. And I mentioned many times before, whenever I talk about row heat mode with Minnesota United, it usually does not work. And it feels like I'm seeing the same thing with Luchi Gonzalez. He's clearly using uh, row heat mode in some of the, these games. And again, the last 10 minutes of this game, the Quakes, they, they just simply sat back and allowed Dallas and all the, the possession. Now, again, you know, Dallas wasn't really creating that much, uh, at least not until um, it was uh, Tafari, the one that, that scored the equalizer uh, up to that point. But still, when you play that kind of brand of soccer, you're basically inviting uh, Dallas pressure to, to create one chance, and that would be enough for them to get the equalizer. And surprise, surprise, that is exactly uh, what happened. And honestly, um, uh, I, I actually was, I didn't actually saw the, the goal in person. I was actually making my way down down the stadium because, you know, I want to get out of the, the stadium as quick as possible, knowing the fact that I have to work tomorrow at 6 in the morning. Uh, but I did see, see it on the replay, and yeah, I mean, that was just 
bad defending from the Quakes. I think mostly on Rodriguez's part where, you know, I don't know why he just, it, 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 it's like he, he kind of ran away, away from Tafari there and then at the last second he realized, oh crap, I gotta, I gotta be closer to Tafari's to try to knock it down. And we know that Tafari is a guy that has that air, aerial uh, ability for, for this Dallas team and he just simply outjumped Rodriguez there. But Rodriguez there, just not great defending from, from him because of the way that they're, I just don't, don't know why he decided to to kind of leave to forest some space and then really at the last second trying to head it in and just just didn't quite do so but you know besides that you know I, I, this is the the thing that i've said a lot about the quakes on the road where the, the, the inability to to close out game and just them giving so many stoppage time time goals is it, just getting very very infuriating almost to a level where i'm starting to see something similar to what we saw uh with columbus last season where you know columbus group fans must be just pulling their hair last season seeing how many times their team blow leads under kayla porter and while we're not actually at that level just yet if we keep it at this rate, maybe that's going to be the, the same case for the Quakes. And again, I just really think that, you know, when you look at how, how the, the Quakes close out games and, you know, as I said before, you know, this has been a problem mostly on the road. This, I think, is the first time at home I've seen them actually struggle to uh, kind of seize this game out. But the way that they, they, they close out game in, in this one is pretty similar to how they do it on the road, which is they just kind of bunker and just pray that that uh, they can just sit back and hope that they can get the resort. And, you know, I just said it many times before, that usually does not not work out when you just have your opposition have all the possession and all the, the, the time to set up plays and just kind, kind of hope for the best that they don't create too many, many chances or even create one good opportunity to score. That's just not how, how it's going to work. And again, that's got to be something that I, I think Lucian Gonzalez got to got to do uh, better because you know as much as right now I know the Quakes are still still performing um, above their expectation. I've said said this this before too, and I'll say it again. They're not going to make the playoffs. They keep doing this. They cannot not make the playoffs. They keep blowing games. And and I really do have a feeling that if this team does miss out on the playoffs late in the season, which, you know, if they do miss out on the, the, the playoffs, I'll still say that it's it's considered a successful season because I, I knew coming into this year, I mean, there was a very low bar set for, for the Quakes. But, uh, you know... Yes, I, I would be happy that they, they still exceed expectation, even if they just miss out and at least they are, they were competing for it. But just the way that, that, that how this season and the way that just they miss out on the playoffs is it because of the way that they, they just keep blowing games multiple times. And I'm even going to call this, I think the Quakes, if they keep it, keep doing the, the same thing that they're, they're, they're doing, they're going to do the same thing that Columbus did last year. Where Remember Columbus, they uh, miss out on the playoffs in the most classic way and the, the story of the season where they, they just kind of blow and lay, uh, concede a late goal against Orlando and they didn't make it to the playoffs. I guarantee you that if it, if it does come out on that final game of the season where uh, I think they're playing against Austin in the final game of the season at home, uh, I wouldn't be surprised that, that they, they would they, they would miss out on the playoffs if they are in a position where they need to win to, to make it to the playoffs or need a draw to make it to the playoffs. They can see the goal late uh, to either lose or draw uh, to not make it to the, the playoffs because, again, this is just something that it, it, it's it's absolutely infuriating to see how, how this team right now, it could be such a better team in terms of where they are in the standings if they simply just don't keep blowing game, games uh, uh, left in and out and that Luchas Gonzalez got to figure out in terms of how, how to to uh, how to close out, out games because you know when you blow out blow blow one game in, in like maybe the, the the first ten or maybe in twenty and you can make that exception but if it's been happening at a regular basis which is had it has ha happened at a regular basis uh, for the Quakes that's going to be something that that um, they're going to have to figure out now the other thing besides uh, for me just kind of laminate about my frustration in terms of the, the team once again unable to seize out games I also didn't think that the Quakes played well in this one in fact uh, if they were going to win this one it would have been a very scrappy win I mean the goal that they score just kind of sums up of the fact that they were on point of a very scrappy uh, win because uh, that this goal came off the corner uh, originally they said Tanner Beeson of course scored this goal but then they later change it to Benji Kikanovic because it looks like both of them uh, got to the header but it's still this one kind of came off the post and then uh, I don't know which Dallas defender was trying to clear it away I think it might have been Tomasi or actually no I'm sorry uh, 
Uh, let me let me uh, re rephrase it. The ball hits the the post there, and uh, I think it was Martin Paz trying to to kind of kind of parry that that one away. Uh, uh, but unfortunately, he wasn't able to do so, and that that ball ball did cross the line. Now, from what I was seeing, I thought it was very close, and I, I can I didn't actually celebrate uh, when that when that goal originally was given because I thought they were going to go to VAR. I thought they were going to to maybe look at it to see how how uh, how close it is, and that remember there is no goal line technology in MLS, so you know depending on how the angle is, uh, there could be a chance that they could call it back. There could be a chance that they didn't. Now eventually, I did look at it a little bit later, and yeah, it was pretty clear that the ball did cross the line. And also, I would like to say that that was just not great the defending from from Dallas, not only from the set piece, but uh, I think it was uh, was it was it Tomasi the one one that that uh, was there there in the front post where. I don't know why he decided to just kind of let it go. I mean, I guess maybe he was thinking that that one was going to go wide, uh, but he just kind of let it go, and that hits the post, and it, it, it took a fortunate bounce to go in. And again, this is before when Martin Paz tried, tried to to kind of put palm this one out, hoping that, you know, the referee uh, didn't, didn't see the fact that he, of course, uh, put that one out of play. But obviously, in the day of, of VAR, you're not going to, to, to get away uh, with that. But still, um, you know, it was a very scrappy goal to the Quakes, of course. I mean, I thought they, they'd gone a little bit better in the second half. The first half was just bad. Like, the the, the first half, there, there was maybe, like, one moment where the Quakes did have some sustained pressure. But then after that, uh, they, they, they started having trouble in terms of keeping possession. The passing was just off uh, in, in this one. And, you know, as the second half goes, it kind of got a little bit better. But still, you know, it wasn't, wasn't that good good too and that I just thought that this looks like it was going to be a, a nil 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 draw uh, but you know they got that scrap B goal and again trying to hold on on for the rest uh, of the game didn't quite quite do so and now again you know anytime when you can see the late goal uh, at home I mean it's one thing to draw points at at home and it feels like a loss but it absolutely feels like a loss when you draw points at home you can see a goal late in in the game and I will also say that you know Dallas themselves they didn't really play well e either in in this game too yes you know they definitely had more of possession but overall they they didn't really create any uh, attacking threat and keep in mind this is with them having the the likes of Velasco and Fiera in this one, I don't think Ariola play in this one, but uh, Velasco did play in this one, and I think he, he, had, he had like one or two chances that were kind of low percentage shot that um, it, the the Quakes easily was able to deal with. But other than that, you know, his Fiera, I thought the Quakes did a good job in terms of shutting down him, not really get, giving him any good looks because that's kind of the thing you, you cannot let let Jesus Fiera do. You cannot let him ha have some good good looks because he's probably going to uh, score that, but yeah, either way, again, just a very frustrating resort for the Quakes. This is going to be something that they got to, to to figure it out, and I also would like to say that I want to apologize to Quakes fan, uh, too, because of the fact that it just feels like I'm, I'm starting to become a bad luck, luck charm whenever I go to the Quakes game. I, I think I mentioned before how uh, last year uh, they went, went through a long stretch where when I'm seeing them in person, they don't win. They either draw or or lose, and it seems like this season. I mean, they did finally get a win uh, when I was there in person for their season opener against Vancouver. But the last two times they drew nil nil against Toronto, and then in this one they they were on point to get the one nothing win, and then yeah, that that ha happened in, in the 94th minute. So again, I, I do apologize to Quakes fans if I go to the the stadium and that I'm pre pretty sure. Um, you know, I'm hoping this video doesn't get too popular to a point where you know. Uh, if the Quakes are actually watching this, they're probably just trying to bar me from going to, to games because I'm just kind of a bad luck ch charm, of course, if you, if you actually believe in that kind, kind of stuff. But, yeah, like I said, frustrating resort. But, you know, the Quakes, they got to have to tur turn things around. And it's not going to be easy because guess who they play next uh, after this game? Oh, yeah, that's right. It's the Seattle Sounders on the road. And this is only on a free day, day rest. And while I know uh, the Sounders haven't been, been playing very, very well, I was actually watching the Sounders versus Red Bulls game while well, this game was happening and you know I didn't think they play uh, well either but again you know whenever the Quakes go on the road again against Seattle which I will say that at least in the last two times when they went up to Lumensfield 
they've been able to get get a resort. I mean, last year on decision day, uh, they got a 2-2 resort, but obviously that was kind of a mean, meaningless game for both of these teams. And then uh, the previous meeting they, they had, they actually had a one nothing win against the Sounders. And that, that actually ended the, the streak of 14 consecutive loss against the Seattle Sounders. So maybe, maybe there could be a chance that the Quakes could get something out of the game. But again, you know, oh, with, with the way how the team ha, ha, has played l lately and and uh, that, you know, I think after just a good start to the, the season, uh, we're starting to see, see something similar to what, what we what I've always seen with the Quakes team, where, you know, they got off to a good start. Maybe they give you some hope that things are going to go well. And then all that hope is gone after after they, they go through a tough stretch like they're in right now. And although, yes, they did get that statement win against LAFC and, uh, at, at Levi Stadium, and that looked like was maybe kind of the, the turning point of, well, this is a different Quakes team. They're not going to just completely uh, drop the, the ball when they go through a tough stretch. It doesn't seem like that is going to to be the, the case. Uh, and again, you know, they're still in the midst of this, this rough stretch. When you talk about they have to play Seattle uh, on a short week, and, you know, you have to you do that uh, to I mean I think the only good news coming out of this is with the way that you know this one staying with them giving up a late goal at least you know uh, they can forget about about that and try to have that reset mindset uh, in, in quick succession in three days but again it's not gonna be easy when you have to do that against the Seattle Sounders on the road never the last which again this team still have not got win a single game on the road and a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's the inability to close out out games and, and seize out big resort for this team but either way let me know in the comments below what do you think of this quick recap again I'll, I'll talk more about what actually happened in this game in my uh review not tomorrow but monday because i'm doing review uh for part one um and hopefully i can do the review for part one before uh the nashville uh versus columbus game is going to be happening it's going to be very tight in term, terms of me you have to write down the the boards and also uh, just just kind of do the, the review uh, of that one tomorrow too, too. but I'm going to try my best and if I don't, can't make it on time, I'll just kind of pause the, the game between Columbus and Nashville because you know, there's always that ability when I, I'm able to watch that on Apple TV but until then, hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do, make sure you guys do like, smash the subscribe button and yeah, I of course will see you guys next time